the anime industry. It is dark, it is damp, it is deep. A massive industry that is long standing and is run by a lot of old heads who still think that Japan is in its economic bubble. And maybe it's because of that that we see constantly so many stories of people who are working in this industry come out of the other end feeling exhausted like they just got out of a goddamn war. And we're going to be talking about one of these instances today with an animator who used to be a pretty prominent and well-known animator over at Mappa. Those of you who don't know, Mappa has made a massive name for itself, creating some of the biggest shows and most talked about shows, including Jujutsu Kaisen, Chainsaw Man, and a slew of other ones that I'm sure you've heard of before. But it seems like he is done. He, he no longer wants to work for Mappa anymore. And there is an article over here by CBR that expresses exactly why that is the case and why it is a really telling story. Just one of many telling stories of why the anime industry may not be as sustainable as the anime industry might think. So see a popular One Piece and Jujutsu Kaisen animator Chansard Vincent, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that name, has shared why he'll never work for MAPPA again via a Twitch livestream. Obviously this livestream is no longer available for whatever reason, but but we do have some translations uh, because I believe Chansard is a French animator. Uh, says here, Chansard and fellow animator Dorian Coulon, again, sorry for the mispronunciation, took part in Konoha TV's Twitch stream where they discussed their anime careers and inspirations. Uh, Twitter user Crocodile OPC translated some of the quotes as the live stream took place, revealing Chansard's reason for why he refused to work with MAPPA ever again. He says here, quote, I don't want to support a company that ideologically doesn't care about working conditions. Hakuyu Gore, who is uh, one of the directors uh, over at uh, MAPPA, or was one of the directors over at MAPPA, had asked me to help out, and I like working with him. He also doesn't want to work for anymore for MAPPA. So even like a head guy at MAPPA doesn't want to work for MAPPA anymore, which is really scary if you ask me. I mean, it is no surprise when we say that, you know, animators in the Japanese anime industry, their work conditions and work environments are no longer a secret. It has been documented hundreds of times of how they are underpaid, how they are understaffed, so they have to be overworked, and that the crunch times and the working conditions are absolutely abysmal. It, it It's literally like a sweatshop, right? in Japan. It says here, Chansard is one of the industry's most popular animators. Despite his young age, he made a name for himself with his work in Boruto as an animator and animation director before his frequent appearances in One Piece introduced him to a larger audience. He was also notoriously responsible for sneaking the Among Us reference into the One Piece anime, which if you guys have never seen that before, it's fucking hilarious. I mean, look at this shit. It's literally in an Among Us, hid it in plain sight, never got caught for it until he went out of his way to actually show it, and I think that is an absolute giga-chad move. Chansard's latest comments expand on ones from November 2023, where he first said that he would never work with MAPPA again, citing then that it was only Go who made him consider it at the time. MAPPA stands to possibly lose two talented animators, with Go purportedly likewise not wanting to work there anymore. Go garnered praise for his work on the widely praised animation in Fate Apocrypha, and on the All Might vs. High End fight in My Hero Academia which are, you know, some of the most amazingly animated scenes that we've seen in recent anime. I mean, it. I, I think it definitely goes to show that, you know, MAPPA, for the longest time, are just continuously upping their animation game. Like, you only have to look at, like, a couple of scenes in Jujutsu Kaisen or a couple of scenes in Chainsaw Man to see that some of these animation qualities are fucking insane. This is the type of quality that we would have seen only in, like, high-budget anime films maybe about five, ten years ago. Now we are seeing them in just weekly seasonal anime like Jujutsu Kaisen and Chainsaw Man. And just to think how much manpower would have had to gone into all of that to achieve on a weekly basis is freaking insane. A little do we know though that it's not actually as a result of a ton of really talented animators that are all working on it together. No, it is usually a couple of animators working on it together over absurd time schedules and crunch times. And are they getting praises for it? Are they getting paid extra for it? Are they getting compensated for their time? Are they getting celebrated for the work that they put in? Unfortunately not. Says here, MAPPA has become infamous for its poor working conditions with Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1 director Sung Hoo Park and Chainsaw Man Season 1 director Ryu Nakayama both alluding to harassment from within the company as reasons for moving on. Chansar's work can be seen in Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2. Uh, a sequel anime was 
recently announced with the first trailer for the upcoming Culling Game arc. So it's really unfortunate that talented people like this are going through these horrible working conditions. And, you know, this is, again, not new stuff that we're seeing. And th this is this is kind of a reoccurring thing. I mean, there are entire organizations out there, like, say, the Animated Dormitory Project, that are constantly trying to cover the asses of these anime studios because of the terrible working conditions that these animators are subject to. I mean, we ourselves over on Trash Taste actually did a full episode with a seasonal animator, Ken Arto, who did stuff on, like, My Hero Academia, as well as Dragon Ball, who expressed the exact same points that I'm making right now. This is not new stuff, but it is getting to the point now where the conditions are becoming so egregious, are becoming so unfair, that these animators just can't hold it in anymore. They're just like done with it. They, they, they want out. And what happens then when these talented animators opt out because of the terrible working conditions? Well, current animators who are maybe not as talented, maybe not as high up in the ranks, for instance, are going to look at that and go, well, shit, if this guy, the star animator in our studio, isn't getting treated properly, then what's going to happen to us? Or rather, what is currently happening to us? Maybe they're so oblivious to the fact that they're getting treated poorly until they see someone of a higher position getting treated just as badly. That's If you're in a company like that, that doesn't make you want to stay in that company. If you look at your boss getting treated like absolute shit and going, wow, well, I guess that promotion didn't really help with anything, huh? It's like the, the working conditions haven't really changed, then there's no real point in trying to work hard to get promoted. And even if you don't want to get promoted, even if you want to stay as like a, a, an in-between animator for the rest of your life, just you have to th weigh the options here. Sure, you know, for a lot of these animators, they're probably doing it out of the passion for the love of animation, for the love of anime. I totally get that. But sometimes you have to step the foot down for the greater good of the industry. Sometimes you have to step your foot down and go, listen, man, passion isn't going to pay the bills. And it's very obvious that a lot of the money that is coming out of the success of series like Jujutsu Kaisen, like One Piece, are not going towards the people who are actually making the shows. It's not going to the animators. It's not going to the producers. It's not going to the directors. It's going to the heads of the IPs, the heads of the industry, usually, again, as I said at the beginning of the video, spearheaded by old heads who still think that they're in the 80s economic bubble. And I've been saying this for years now, and, and people have been saying this for years, that this system that the anime industry has set themselves in is absolutely unsustainable. It is not going to last because the only reason why animation quality in these big studios has increased is because the demand for such high quality animation has also increased with anime just becoming so much more popular and so much more mainstream compared to 5, 10, 15 years ago. It's just created a bigger demand for more shows of better quality at a faster rate. But if you don't answer that demand with the appropriate supply, then it's just going to start crumbling at the seams, which is, I think, what is actually happening with the anime industry right now. And, and to me, you know, as someone who has, you know, looked at the anime industry and been part of the anime industry for quite a while now, it's crazy to see that it hasn't reached that point yet. Because trust me, if it was any other country, if this system was set up in like America, for instance, it would be gone before you know it. People will understand the inequalities of what's happening to them as opposed to the big businessmen up at the top and see the pay gap, see the relationship gap and stuff like that, see the hard work not getting paid off at the bottom. And there's just going to be like a, a massive strike. There's going to be a massive coup d'etat happening within the anime industry. The only reason why the Japanese people don't do it is because they're too scared to a lot of the time. And, and that is a fact. And, you know, like, look at how just Japanese society operates with that kind of stuff. They're very just complacent and content with where they are because they don't want to overstep their boundaries as a result of the collective societal norm that Japan has created itself around. But that gritting of the teeth by the animators, I don't think is going to last for very long. And I think within the next, like, three, four, five years, we are going to see that massive strike. If we don't see that massive strike, then we are definitely going to see animators just quietly leaving through the exit, not wanting to interact with the anime industry ever again. And what's going to happen as a result of that is we're going to get less shows of worse quality 
at a slower rate. And that's not going to please the big businessmen at the top because they see that this influx of money is starting to come in as a result of anime becoming more mainstream. So they're going to want more. They're going to want more animators. They're going to want more better quality. They're going to want more shows just in general to satiate that need and satiate that demand with as much supply as possible. But if your supply is unsustainable, then no one wins. I don't want to put the blame entirely on like the big businessmen as well. I think some of the blame also has to be pointed towards like people who watch anime, us, anime fans. I think we've become so complacent with like this higher quality more frequently that it's sending a weird message towards people in the industry that we want more, 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 keep giving us more of better quality and just keep upping it over and over and over again. And one thing that is certainly not helping is all those fucking Twitter accounts that do like a, yeah, so I compared uh, this particular anime scene with the manga panel and I can't believe how much they fucking ruined my favorite scene in the anime because they moved this one pixel too far to the fucking right. Every time I see people like that, I I just think you 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 just don't deserve anime straight up you just don't deserve it because you don't understand how much hard work and effort is being put into creating these shows that you then openly criticize on your twitter for likes and interactions and look that's not me saying that anime is like void of any kind of criticism like of course it's allowed to be criticized it's it's a public work that is sent out there to the public but i think getting like nitpicky with stuff like that that really at the end of the day does not change whether the enjoyment factor of a show increases or decreases in any amount of ways i think just sends like a weird message to the anime industry of like oh okay uh we're very sorry that we fucked up your favorite manga panel uh please let us change that by giving you the most godly animation on a weekly basis oh by the way uh we're not gonna change the pay of our animators though um so yeah if if the animator doesn't sleep for three days it's it's kind of on you as well if you ask me Really unfair, right? Obviously, like, the common enemy should be, like, the big businessmen at the top uh, who own these anime industries, who are reaping in all the money that the anime makes, and are just, like, money-hungry and power-hungry to just keep making more and milking out this animation medium. But I think, as anime fans, we also need to be respectful of these animators who are putting in the time, putting in the passion, putting in the effort to giving us some of the most memorable television that we've ever seen at such a low cost and a poor standard of living. So I think the one thing we can do as anime fans is to just like be patient. If a new season is going to come out in like the next like four or five years, let the animators cook. Don't rush them. Just let them do their thing. And if it ends up being great, then hey, I guess the wait was worth it. And if I had to say anything uh, to the actual like people in the anime industry, first off, let's start off with like the top business people. What the fuck are you doing? Hey, your goddamn animators. They are carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders like fucking Atlas so that you can sit up in your high chair and smoke that cigar like the anime villain that you are. Don't rush out shit. Stop making all of these fucking like niche shows that three people are going to watch because no one cares. Can we just take it back to the early 2000s where there was maybe like 10 shows a season that were all pretty decent or at least good? What happened to quality over quantity? Because right now you have quality and quantity, which everybody knows does not work together. You have to sacrifice one or the other. You can't just keep pushing one and hoping that the other one is going to follow without following that up with more people at hand or better pay or more, I guess, encouragement to give to the animators to be like, hey, you know, you have to animate like uh, seven scenes in the next like four minutes, uh, but at least at least the pay is good. At least you're getting paid for your efforts. There's a lot that can be changed here. And if the current trajectory of how the anime industry operates continues to go the way that it does, I am very afraid that we're going to get to the point where there will just be no anime at all. Or we're just going to get to the point with what Western cartoons became, where it's just all 3D with 3D models, which, you know, in a lot of ways, isn't the worst thing in the world. But I think the one thing that makes anime still so unique in the year of 2024 is that a lot of it is still 2D. A lot of it is still hand-drawn. That's a magic that we don't want to lose 
in our Japanese cartoons because that's what makes it so much more unique and enthralling and fun to watch and experience. Like look what happened when Ghibli finally decided to buckle their knees to the 3D overlord and create that really shit 3D anime film. No one gave a shit about it, it looked like crap, and Ghibli backed out on their words by creating Boy and the Heron and went back to their old methods and won a fucking golden globe for it. So obviously there is a massive demand to the type of stuff that you are doing, but you have to fix it from the inside. You have to completely restructure the model of how this industry operates, otherwise it is going to die. And if I may be so bold to say, if it results in animators struggling, you know, losing sleep, losing their lives, really, and stepping away from it all because the work conditions are so shit and they're not getting paid enough, maybe anime deserves to die. That's my thoughts and opinions on it. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. I'd love to know what you think. And uh, hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smack my face right here. Subscribe to the channel. Let's keep making big channel number go bigger. Over here next to my head is a couple more videos you can check out. If you enjoyed this one, links to my social media as well as my Patreon to support me directly and Nonsense, my clothing brand. Check it out. We have sick clothes at nonsense.jp. Links in the description. And I will see you all in the next one. Peace.